Hello everyone, I'm James Ashley, the dentist. I'm here with another James, just to make it confusing, James Kinsey, the dental therapist I work with. Um, Hello. Good morning, James. So morning. we're hoping to give today some really good advice to reassure people that at the moment when they can't come to the dentist and in the future, even when the dentist is open, um, really serious gum disease problems are something you can control. So we're aware that people watching this might have just been told they've got serious gum disease um, or they may have had it for a long time and it's got worse or they're worried about it. And what we want to do is, even though that can be quite serious and, and worrying and even depressing, we want to give quite a positive um, message on how to look after yourself. So we'll be upbeat and even though we might come across like we're having a, a, a fun chat, we are all both aware how serious it is um, and you don't want to lose your teeth and you do want to heal your gums. But rather than worrying more about it, we're going to be quite upbeat and how positive you can be um, with the advice we give you today. So there's other links um, in our series for some of the other details, but um, today's one is really focused on how can you look after yourself at home? There's going to be some screen sharing, which I hope will show up on the video okay, but me and James are not slick at this, so we'll try our best. <laughs> Is that okay, James? Yeah, that's great. Cheers. So I'll start with um, sharing the title. Got that. Great. So just going to the top, it's only a short slides, but it helps give the structure of what we're doing today. And, and the thing I want people to remember when they leave this is that this problem is beaten in the bathroom. So that obvious thing that I, I've got a problem, I have to go to the dentist. Yes, if it's a decay or a toothache, but when it's a long-term gum disease problem, it's, it's, a, it's going to be beaten by really good daily care. And then your gums will get better with that daily care. It might not be as perfect as when the treatment that James um, can do can help as well. But how much, how much of the problem do you see, James, is solved with, with good home care? Almost all cases, really. Um, I make it my aim to, to mention this to patients that, you know, we can help in the, in the, in the dental practice when it comes to, to gum disease. What really hammers this home and, and gets the best results is patients that realise that improving at home is more or less everything that will help the gums get better. Yeah, so if you do, say you see somebody every three months for really thorough cleaning. Yeah you'll have some patients who keep coming back for that and it's, mm -hmm. it's either the same or it's gradually getting worse. Yep. And you'll have some patients who are having that same treatment from you and are really improving and the gums are stabilizing and the bleeding's going away. So the, the message we're, we're, we're telling today is it's in your control. If you work on this at home the right way, the vast majority of cases 90 plus percent will respond the right way and you will get better that's right yeah so there is some unusual cases which are rare but we watch out for those and if we're seeing those sorts of cases where you're not responding mm. we can give advice and, and look into that so just one one of my um, little drawings which always uh, make people laugh but this is something i want to i have to stop sharing i think at this point let's get this up is that showing, James? Yeah, I've got that. Okay, so we've got teeth and we've got gums, and some of the gums are a bit more inflamed, a bit bigger. We've got the gum line going up and down, and we've got bone around the teeth, and then where the teeth and the gum joins, we've got some blue bits. And so on, on this diagram, above this line, is where home care can get to the gum edge and where home care matters. So the majority of the swollen gum and the problem is dealt with above the gum, above that line and on the gum edge. Whereas below is what the hygienist or therapist can do with their special instruments. But the below bits are quite a small area. So we've got above patients can do and below is where the special treatment you provide, James, comes in. That's but the correct, special yeah. treatment you provide really doesn't have much chance 
and less patients are doing the home care every day in between. Yep. That's right. It's, it's a pointless exercise, really. Unless unless the, the care above the gum is to a good degree, my treatment is not as effective. So it's like a teamwork effort, really. Yeah. So we, if we clean out underneath the gum and food and plaque is packing in at the top, it just quickly goes back into that gap and that space can't heal. So if patients can do everything above the line of drawn, which is most of the gum edge, then it's very hard for the problem to keep happening because the plaque which causes it is being taken away. So back to that point, this, this happens at home and most of this treatment happens at home. Okay, we've got a few, few uh, pointers to go through now. So the routine, this must be suitable to the individual in my mind. It's no point of telling people what their routine should be, except once a day, those gums need rubbing and yep. disturbing. Any suggestions, James? Yeah, so twi twice daily brushing for the gum, and then once daily, I say, to get in, actually in between the teeth, the gum in between. So you've got the toothbrush going around twice a day anyway for normal cleanliness, freshness, yep. um, helping against decay, but separate to the toothbrush, in between once a day. And once, that, a day. once a day doesn't matter when, yeah, it's just, it's tailor specific to each patient, really. And, and it's going to on the job, lifestyle, you know. So it's going to bleed quite a bit. That can be, I think that can be quite unpleasant. And so potentially in the shower, that can be a way of doing it. Yep. I, don't, I don't think it's great last thing before bed. I don't think it's good trying to go to bed. Yeah, We've just disturbed the gums and got a load of, you know, taste of blood about. Mm. And in the morning before we're rushing out, not a good time. So I'd normally say, the, the steady, you know, the standard thing everyone has is an evening meal, and go and do it after that, or you shower once a day and you do it in that. Yeah, what, what I normally say is, is do it before you brush at night time. Mm -hmm. So whether that's immediately before or an hour or so before, because if there is a lot of blood, it will feel, your mouth will feel fresh if you brush your teeth and gum afterwards. Yeah. A lot of people think that they need to floss and, and you know, use the brushes after brushing the teeth, but sometimes it's best to do it before, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you if you've taken the the stuff out of the gaps, and then you've got the toothpaste going around, that's going to then flow into those gaps and help more. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, individual person, the people should work to a routine. But I think that's where we keep up a standard by having a routine. Saying, I'm going to commit to this. This is yeah. what I'm going to do. If you attach it to something else, it happens every day, like your evening meal, or like a shower, or a certain time of the day, and um, just maybe avoid the before bed when you're tired. That's when a lot of people either forget or don't do it well. And when you're in a rush, it takes a few minutes, this. So, so moving on now to technique. Are we asking people to do the most difficult thing in personal care? I mean, trimming your toenails is a bit tricky. But, <laughs> you know, what, what is more tricky in personal care than cleaning inside your mouth where you can't see what you're doing? Yeah, very hard. It is difficult. I mean, as you put there, though, like with most things, practice makes perfect, doesn't it? It can be off-putting at the start, especially with the bleeding and the fact that it is hard to get the back teeth. But I'd reassure patients that, you know, if you're doing it once a day, it does get easier. And it's just yeah. making sure you commit to it. And yeah. It and not, not having the expectations too high. So yeah. would you say like week one, week two, just maybe, if you've not been a great brusher, maybe yeah. just take your time with the toothbrush on the gum edge. That's good and, advice. Yeah. And work the, work the toothbrush at all different angles, behind mm -hmm. the teeth, on the outside. We cover every little edge that that toothbrush can get to. Yeah. And then when you're really confident that's going well, you'll probably find that also reduces some of the bleeding. So then when you go in more into the gaps, it's less bleeding, less uncomfortable. Maybe, maybe even the gums are a bit less swollen, so it's easier to yeah. get in yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. gradually step it up. Yeah. It is tricky, but... Those who persevere, nearly everyone can do it. Yeah. And in a separate video we've got on the on the uh, selection, there's more detailed advice on that. So, um, but then if you're needing more help um, in person, when we're open again and we can see patients, some hygienist visits I think are better spent checking that technique and patients asking us, "This is how I do it. Is this the right way?" And then that confidence that we know the technique works because if we know they've got the technique. 
we know they can do it that's a big tick for me i think loads of people feel they make a big effort and feel they're doing it right mm. and actually aren't and that's that's then really disappointing that the gums aren't getting better mm. so i think getting an effective technique is is really really tricky but really important and just to add to that as well um you know using incidental brushes or even floss is hard for the back teeth i sometimes say to, to patients maybe just concentrate on doing one area so use the brushes for the, maybe the front th six teeth or the top six teeth. Just give it a go. And when you've yeah. mastered that area, yeah. the next time I see you, I can then discuss how to get the back teeth, which can be a bit more difficult. Once yeah. you've mastered the front, it's a bit easier, you know? Yeah. It's all, it's all doable in the end. It's just yeah. not expecting too much of themselves, I think, as they, as they start it. Mm -hmm. Okay, motivation. Could this be the biggest factor in success? Definitely, yeah. Motivation plays a massive part of it, and it's you know if, if the motivation's not there, the results you know also don't appear either. Because there can be lots of hurdles, can't there? There's the yeah. I don't like going to the dentist. You've got to motivate yourself past that. I haven't got time. Mm -hmm. um, this is difficult. When I do it, it, it's unpleasant. It bleeds, or it, it's not nice. It's loads. Of, if you want reasons to not do this, there's there's loads of them, isn't there? So it's yeah. easy, I think, to slip, but to keep your motivation up, I think it's difficult. When we see patients every three months who've got a serious gum problem, it's only human for them to slip, I think. There's not many people who can keep it up, really motivated for that whole three months. And we try and boost them when they come in and encourage. But I, I mentioned to people about maybe once a week, maybe a Sunday or a day where you can give yourself 10 minutes. Plan it again in your routine that once a week you give yourself the Rolls Royce clean. There's no rushing. You take your time, you do every little corner, and that hopefully boosts you back up to top, your top ability. And that, that Rolls Royce clean might get better each week because it's you're improving on how good you're getting. So um, that's one suggestion I try and use. Also, you get more motivated as you do it. So you might start out and there's loads of bleeding and it's really off-putting and bleeding gums is something that you're just used to. However, if you're doing that daily clean, the bleeding reduces and then it sort of clicks and where patients think, well, this is getting better. There's less bleeding. It motivates you to do it more. And if you slip and don't do it as much, you then go back to doing it because you know that it's going to be more bleeding eventually and, and things like that. Yeah, you know? yeah so, so a, a belief... A belief that this is starting to work so if if this is a patient who's watching this who's been told today that they've got serious gum disease and they've bought the things on the way home and they're going to start how long you know average patient non-smoker um how long do you think they should be able to see signs of improvement how what should they wait you know how long should they be patient for yeah i'd probably say a minimum fortnight two two weeks that's when you start to see the the early changes anyway mm -hmm. the early improvements i should say yeah yeah, they should. I think I'd agree in, in the fact that a lot of these cases have had probably a bit of a hidden gum problem for a long time, mm. and that's not going to heal overnight. So the, as their technique improves, and um, the gums gradually get less swollen and gradually start to bleed less, and there will be a, a point where if you're taking it enough plaque away each day, the gums start to heal quite quickly, but not to expect themselves to be that good at cleaning in week one. So you're right, it might be a couple of weeks before they really see the bleeding come down. Not to be put off that they're not getting immediate results. How many times, James, have you heard, I don't do that because it makes them bleed? Yeah, vicious, vicious cycle. I'd say eight out of ten gum disease patients say that to me. Yeah. Where it's totally understandable, isn't it? It is understandable. Definitely. Going back to cutting your toe, toenails and each time you tried to cut them, there's a load of blood. You just wouldn't like, do it. That's not right. No. So it is, it is the opposite of what you think logically. I'm doing some damage here, you'd think, with the bleeding. Yeah. But unless we rub those gums, they're not going to get better. Yeah. So I'd say the majority of patients are quite surprised when they say, you know, my gum has been bleeding for years. And when I say, well, that bleeding can stop if you do this, they're quite surprised by that, thinking, I just thought my gum bleeds, that I was born that way. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. It's, it's just changing the habits to get it back under control. I know, I know with those patients, we have got an uphill, extra uphill battle because it, unfortunately for them, they're so used to it. Mm. it. It's really hard to get that belief that this isn't going to be forever. And, 
and it's trying to really encourage them to try and get them past that first two to four weeks. Mm. And then they come back and I've had people so, so happy that for the first time that they can remember, mm. the gums don't bleed. And that's wonderful. So it's a harder challenge, but it's a bigger gain, I think, and a really, real massive, massive uh, motivation when, like you say, they get the motivation from seeing the benefit. Other things of motivation we should mention, clearly we don't want people to lose the teeth. And if they, if they keep wanting to save the teeth, and it's a longer term thing, that's so it's harder to be motivated today, mm. but that should be at the back of the mind. I am keeping my teeth. Um, yep. Treatment visits. Most people don't like coming for treatment for gum problems. It's mm. understandable. Again, it's tricky and it's, it's uh, difficult. And it's, a lot of people are busy and haven't got time. So you'll need less treatment if you get the mo home care right. And cost is an issue as well. And then, of course, anxious patients. The classic one, I'm too anxious to go and have gum treatment, so I'm always going to have gum problems. No, you, mm. you can really do most of this at home. And if you then want some extra help, we can do some help where we just go over the cleaning technique and don't do any scraping. And that can be a really gentle thing that's easy to manage, even if you're anxious. Yes. So we've got a patient now, hopefully, who's got a routine in the head. They might have chosen the after every evening meal. Yep. They're going to accept that the technique is going to build up gradually mm. and get that better by week by week and month by month and try and help motivate themselves. But again, this is not easy. So the last piece in the jigsaw puzzle is support. And that can come from different positions, can't it? Yeah, definitely. Support's a massive part of it, really. You know, don't, don't attack it on your own. Get spousal support, family support's good. Tell, him, tell people support. what you're trying to do, I think, always encourages you to keep it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Hopefully they won't say, oh, no, you'll never do that. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, you have to ignore them if that's the case. <laughs> Just saying, this is why I might have to spend a bit longer in the bathroom. This is mm. what I'm going to do after eating a meal every night. When you've told someone, it's harder to not do it. It's Definitely. like, it's yeah. easy to fail quietly to yourself. Yeah. But I think they say people who organize going out for a run, they get a much better success rate of keeping it up if they run with someone, they're going to have, yeah. have to meet them to do it. Yeah. Um, but also we're trying to do this to support from a dental team perspective. And obviously when we're open again, people can get that in person. Um, but there's more resource than our, on our site. And then specialists, do you want to just explain when a specialist comes into play? Yes, so a periodontist is a specialist dentist that deals with gum disease. And there's several specialised people in the country. Uh, our local one is Ian Dunn over in Liverpool. And we might offer to send to Ian if we've done everything we can ourselves in the dental practice. And if we're getting no results, then we might send it to Ian to see if he can help. Or we might send cases which are a bit unusual to him. For instance, young, young people with, with quite severe gum disease. Yeah. Uh, or we'll just give it an option if people would like to go down the, the route to see a specialist if they so wish, you know? Yeah. So it's that thing that we, I'm, I'm not bragging here, but I think we're really good at helping people with gum disease. And most people who come to us and work on their technique, accept it's a bit of a long-term fix, Get the, get the support from us, most get it healed and sorted and stabilised. Mm. But some cases will get a better result by seeing Ian on the fact he gives a second opinion. Mm. He works focused, he teaches dentists how to do gum disease treatment. He's, he's really specific. There's other specialists out there. He just happens to be our, our local one. And, um, and he does offer sometimes additional treatments, um, which anything, anything that helps. So... If you want extra help, there's, there's a, things available. So we put this together. Sorry, James. I'm sorry, I was just gonna add back to that. But one, one thing to mention as well, the biggest cornerstone of, of referral to a specialist involves the motivation again. So there's not much point in you going to see a specialist if, if the home care or self care yeah. isn't right to the right level. Yeah, so and again, and, and specialists, of course, it's a, another expense. And I would say to my patients who are thinking about it, get your home cleaning as good as you can. And then when you get the treatment, if you do have treatment with Ian, you're going to get the best results out of it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be trying to get good at home cleaning after it. You need to be good beforehand. Yeah. And he can see the true extent of the problem if the home cleaning is, is really good. So yeah, quite right.
So we put those things together, get yourself a routine, work on your technique and accept it's tricky, but you'll get better and better and better. Think about your motivations and maybe write them down, maybe tell your partner, um, but think about your motivations and then get support. I think once you've got the sort of gum disease we're talking about that can lead to losing your teeth, it, it makes the gum edge a really tricky shape to clean. You've normally got that problem because you might not be someone who's great at going to the dentist regularly, or you might be someone who's not great at cleaning every day. So you've got challenges ahead and the support, I think you shouldn't underestimate the benefits of that if you get the right support. We'll do our best as soon as we can be open to do that in person. But um, for now, things like this are gonna help. Great. So, I've just put one last point here. Your gums will get better gradually. I don't want people um, disheartened that in month one or month two, the problem's still ongoing. All those factors to get them all sorted are tricky. So you might find your technique turns out isn't as good as you thought, or your motivation means you're not doing it every week because with your shift pattern, it's difficult or something happens. So keep working on it. The gum disease is slow normally to progress. You can get burst where it kicks off but it's generally a slow thing and I think this is the last point we'll mention is the comparison to diabetes um, a bit a bit like diabetes and the fact you you'll look after your diabetes if you have the right care at home what you do to yourself but also it's a quite a long-term thing and so you have to keep managing it and if you manage it well you can have a really good success with gum treatment and I've, I've got patients who've been diagnosed as diabetic manage themselves well and are now told by the doctors they're not diabetic anymore so i think you know we should see it in that similar way yeah and also as well it's a good point to mention that uh, trying to manage expectations that it's a bit similar to what you just said james that you know you've got gum disease your home care is perfected you, you know your daily home care your in between the teeth cleans a lot better and your gum disease stabilizes it's important then to not stop doing that interdental or in between yeah. cleaning it's a, yeah. it's a lifelong thing that you have to keep doing to, to keep on top of it because if yeah. you don't then it'll go back down to the the, the, the issue that you had before the good news is once you once you're getting that gums going well it meet that means you've got a good technique you've managed the motivation mm. you've done all the hard things now it's like keeping it up so going back to once a week giving yourself the rolls royce clean maybe keeping every three months with your hygienist visit. Um, and then you can back that off if, if you know you're managing to maintain it yourself. But again, we can give feedback in checkups and things over that. Great. Great. I think that's really good, James. Really good overview. Thank you for your time and hope everyone- Thank you. Been, no problem. I think that's been um, a useful summary. Please look at the other links because um, we can't tell the whole story of what to do in one, one video, but good luck. And we hope to see you soon in the practice to give you um, that one-on-one -on -one, uh, care that we, we like to do. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.